You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. As some of you may on Twitter, the gaming drag the damn coming back at you to the Let's Play episode of Kingsguard. Possibly Leandros's path. So anyway, y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm Chan, you were up and let's go. Alright. <clears throat> I merely wanted to say goodbye to my loved ones, the hunter replied as he moved away from the hut. The man could only hope that the beast fell for his final trap as he did his best to keep the demon from discovering that his family wasn't there. The beast eyed the man carefully, but his stomach growled and it didn't wait, want to wait any longer. The demon wasted no time and began to chomp down, and caring that he was devouring the entire house itself. The house crumbled down as the beast ate and ate, sending pieces of the home flying in its gluttony. As the beast feasted further in... Further, it struck into the hunter's trap and roared back in pain. Large spikes had pierced through its mouth and face. The peasant's trap has been sprung by the beast's veracity. veracity. It had been impaled by the furniture the hunter sharpened to a point within. You will curse the day that you, you will curse the day that you decided to trick me, human. No, you won't live another day. The demon tried to move forward to devour the hunter, but as soon as it opened or closed its jaw, it froze in place and screamed out in pain. Before the demon could recover, the man took out his bow, knocked in his arrows, and aimed at the beast's heart. He hoped that his wish had been granted and fired several bolts that all flew true. The beast roared one last time before it rolled onto the ground and its movement stilled. The family came out of hiding carefully and the hunter checked the beast. It was dead. The peasant had vanquished the beast and saved his family. With the creature vanquished, the hunter not only had his skills, but also had the meat of the beast to help feed his family. The family survived through the winter and many winters after. Never again did the family starve. The man was regarded as the greatest hunter in the land for defeating the demon that tormented and tricked so many before him. And that is the end of The Hunter and the Demon. As Leandris was thinking about the story, you moved in like the hunter and took advantage of his days. You closed the distance between the two of you and moved to his left. It was the side he kept returning away from you. Likely a weakness. Your sudden movement snapped him out of his stupor, but it was too late for him to react. As he tried to back away, you were ready with an outstretched leg that sent him toppling to the floor. Before he could recover, your blade was at his neck. Between telling the story and sparring, you were completely out of breath, but you managed to get Leandrus to work up at least a few beads of sweat. For a day's training, today's training was quite a challenge for the both of you. You let your guard down. I thought that was grounds for death. Hm. I must be getting old to fall for that trip for a trip that simple. Simple, but highly effective, obviously. I suppose you are right in that regard. Next time, don't think you will be so lucky. If this was a real battle, there wouldn't be a next time. You moved your sword away from him and reached out a hand. He hesitated for a moment. Then he took your hand and you he helped pull him up back onto his feet. So this marks a milestone for me. I finally won for once. If you take into account that if you take if you take into account that if this were a real battle, you likely would have died around thirty or so times by the first half of your story. You were so full of openings, I swear you were Swiss cheese. I'm taking my victories where I can get them. Besides, isn't this the part where you say congratulations or something? Congratulations. Leandrus said it in a deadpan voice. Certainly if, certainly more for saying saying it than meaning it. Gee, your enthusiasm warms my heart. You did well today, but there's always room to improve. For now, think about working on your form. I wanted to I wanted to tell you to fix your stances, but you didn't want me to interrupt your story. I will. It's just hard to breathe properly while fighting and talking so much, and my mind was on other things. Did you enjoy the story at least? I give it to you that you could be quite quite a good bard, but I'm not too fond of tall tales and folk legends. Plus, there were plenty of faults in that story, like the demon already knowing about the family and not just attacking them in the first place. And maybe the demon couldn't kill people without first making a deal. I don't know. Why is it... Why is it... That's why it's fiction. If the story ended like that, though, then you wouldn't get a good moral lesson from it. That trickery always gets you what you want. Or cunning. But hey, sometimes that's just life. Next time, I will have to find one with a little less fantasy. Then, I should be good with the sto I should be good with the stories the guys at the tavern belch about. You set your weapon back onto the stand and dried yourself off with the nearby towels brought by the servants. You dipped a towel into a bucket of water and rubbed it along your body. It was cool to the touch and felt refreshing. Second, y'all. All right, it is indeed a water time. Hmm. Oh. Fuck me, that's some good water. Alright. Leandrus didn't seem to bother as he went straight for putting back on his own armor. After drying yourself off with another towel, you also clothed yourself. With training done, your bath was likely being prepared. After that would be dinner. Well then, 
Tell Marilyn and Esther I said a good evening, would you? You're not planning on joining us for dinner? I have somewhere else I will be. Oh, and where is that? Just somewhere. It had been many weeks since you last sat down and had a meal along with Leandros. The only person who'd ever joined you at the table recently was your father, and knowing he would likely be there churned your insides even with Marilyn and Esther joining you. And a dinner with both Esther and your father was usually a three-course meal followed with freshly served up passive aggressiveness for dessert. <sighs> having him join having him join would have been a nice change of pace and likely kept the both of you from going at each other's throats. Which is a simple sibling rivalry, but it really ruined the mood and spoiled the taste of things. But these past few weeks we but these past weeks were a, were a very were a very busy and stressful time for everyone in the castle. I wondered if he had any time to take a breather. Well, uh, do you mind if I tag along then? Why? Uh, because it has been so long since we have we've had the challenge to, we've had the chance to really hang out. The last time we had the opportunity to talk this long was last you trained with him, with me a week ago. I'm sorry, but for now you should go see your family. Your aunt and uncle have been longing to see you, and they won't be here but for a few days. Leandris left without another word, and the two servants in the distance gathered by to carry off his weapons and towels. You hadn't noticed during the training, but now that you had some time to cool it down, you noticed that something felt off. Despite your attention being divided between the telling of the story and the defending from his attacks, you managed to keep your eyes peeled on his movements. They were slower than what you were used to. It might have been that you were getting better, able to predict his actions, but he also seemed to be far more distracted than usual. He might have been listening to the story, but it felt like he simply kept an, kept an ear nearby while having a sense focus on something off in the distance. Your win was almost too easy when you really thought about it. If today was rough for him, then he might have decided to have some alone time and head off to the tavern. Uh... Hmm... I wonder. I kind of want to do Leandro's first. Uh, I know a lot of you are wanting the Fox Boy first, but... Ah! Uh, damn it. Fox or Lion. Fox or Lion. Fox or Lion! We should save the Fox, the fox for the middle. Because, like, there's there's Leandros, and then there is the big, beefy rhino guy. So, if we do... Uh... If we do Ta if we do Leandros, then Fox Boy, and then Rhino Man, that should be a good balance. So we'll do Leandros this run. You heard it here, folks. You heard it here first, folks. This is Leandros' run. Alright? Something's up with him. I'll just follow along and see where he goes, and if it really is nothing, I'll head back. I want to try to follow Leandros without being seen. I will need to be extra careful, though. He can likely smell me, some him smell me from a distance, so maybe if I use a lot of soap, it will mask my scent. And there's his cat-like eyes. Even the cover of night might not be enough of an advantage. Maybe I could ask one of his soldiers to tell me which tavern he frequents. Then again, they might act get suspicious and inform him. From the time you walked to the washroom, took a bath, and dried yourself off, you thought of the night ahead. Strolling through the front doors was never an option for you unless you somehow were able to become invisible. It was always locked and guarded at all hours of the day, and the only time you left or entered through them was when you were accompanied by Leandros. It left only two places for which you could leave the castle. The guard barracks and the Hall of Regency. Hmm, it might be difficult to wander through the barracks, even if I could bribe the guards to let me out. Leandros would be there to take me back. After the quick bath, you wandered up to your room to gather a shoddy-looking robe and wrapped it under your arm. With it, you could wander the streets at night unseen. It looked suspicious, but at this time of night, so did everyone else. As you left, you found a servant outside your door. Ah, there you are. Yes? M what is it? You hid the cloak behind your back before he noticed. Dinner is ready, sir. Your aunt and uncle have already been informed and are on their way currently to the dining hall. Shall we go? Is father there as well? He will not be joining us this evening, sadly. I see. Well... Please go on ahead, I will be there in just a moment. The servant bowed and walked off. He felt kind of bad for leaving Marilyn and Esther alone on their first day here, but, here, but your father was doing the same. You snuck through the castle, avoiding the servants and guards until you wound up in the Hall of Regency. Portraits of all the past kings and queens that ruled Yasan were hung up on the wall. When you were little, this place always gave you the creeps with their numerous eyes staring down at you following your movements. You only mustered up the courage to head here to see the portrait of your mother. You stopped in front of it and admired her for a moment. It had been years since you last saw her real face. She likely had graying hair like your father. Anytime you inquired about her whereabouts, you were always told that she simply went back to her hometown, though everyone was reluctant to say where. Even years of scavenging about in your father's study for the tiniest details led to nothing. You turned away from her portrait, and besides her was your father's. His face was just as imposing in paint. After the coronation, you too would have... You too would have to have your portrait taken, sitting down for hours. 
That was a weird noise. I'm moving as the artist put in every detail he could. Then it would be hung up right next to your father's, though you wished it would have been as far away from his as possible. Further down the hall in a small nook was a seemingly innocent wall, but unbeknown to many, other, to many this was your way out. You turned a pair of sconces upside down and they quickly bolted back upright. Then seconds a low rumble, a low rumble light shook the room. A crack in the wall in front of you opened up, widening until it was large enough for even someone of Leandra's size to fit through. It was one of the few secret escape routes of your castle, only to be used for emergencies, but the rules would have to make an exception this time, like the other hundred or so times you used this passage. You scurried through the hole and down into a dark corridor before it closed up behind you. In from view and now out the streets, you grabbed your ragged cloak and draped it around yourself. In the distance echoed the wailing of the train, making, it fin making its final stops followed by the ringing of the bell tower, ushering in a new hour. You, shat you sat in the shadows of a merchant's building and waited for Leandr... Leandr's is... For Leandr blah, for Leandr's for merchant. Sorry, y'all. It's, it's late. <laughs> like past 12 a.m. Time ticked on as you observed drunken revelers sing merry tunes off-key. Starstruck lovers giggling and convorting under the moonlight, and quarreling couples yell and poke one another with stiff fingers. You were just about to fall asleep from the wait when you noticed that familiar outline of a knight walking away from the castle grounds. It was too dark to clearly see his face, but the moment he walked past you, you knew it was him. Once he was several meters away, you picked yourself up off the streets and began the trail. It was exhilarating at first. This must be how it feels to stalk your prey, you thought to yourself. As he passed through the gates to the lower districts, you took a detour over to the side to one of... Uh, to another one of your hidden passages, another one of your hidden passages hidden in the bushes. There's a small gap in the iron gate that was wide enough for you to squeeze through as a child, courtesy, of course, to a very powerful ox beast man you had tipped years ago. While you had grown, of course, you were just thin enough to fit through. After slipping past and making sure the coast was clear, you hastened your pursuit before he got too far away. You traveled further and further away from the castle, progressing even deeper down to the heart of the sea. <sighs> As you passed by the fourth tavern, you questioned just whether or not he was going he was even going to uh, going out to one. You turned down an alleyway and you waited for a minute before peeking around the corner. He was at the far end and turned right. You quieted your footsteps as they began to echo off the brick corridor and sneaked inside. He went right again. You followed. He went left. You followed. He went right. Then you decided left. As you turned the corner, you stood staring at a brick wall in the alley. Despite your knowledge of the city streets, you hadn't really focused on your surroundings. And Leandris was hardly making any noise, so it was difficult to follow him by the sound. Shit. Where do I go now? Second, y'all. Let me drink some water. Ugh. Take the passage to the right. I don't think Leandris went this way, but I've been wrong before. Uh. Left. I've got a good feeling that Leandris went this way. Uh, let's see. You know, it's a difficult falling. Not city streets. So, uh, you turn, you said you waited a brick wall in the alley. You decided to, Then you decided to left. You went right, then you decided to left. Okay. Where do I go now? Let's take the passage left. Alright? Take the passage left. If you're in a maze, always go left. Right? Maybe not. Uh, left. Okay. Uh, take a right. Uh, am I eternally doomed? Forced to wander this stone maze until my flesh tears and bones grind to dust upon these stained grounds? You're trapped in a maze of brick and mortar. The walls seemed to meld together as you blindly wandered the back streets with no way of telling where you were. It was even more difficult to make your way as the only light granted as the only light granted was from slivers of moonlight leaking down from above. To get by, you used your hands rather than your eyes and felt the walls. Every so often you groaned when your palms came into contact contact with some sticky or slimy substance you'd rather leave a mystery. Just as you were about to take a rest, you heard muted voices echoing through the passageway. Like a moth to like a moth to a flame, you chased after them until you found yourself thankfully back out into the streets. The moment you poked your head out of the alley, a large hand gripped down on your shoulder and pulled you aside. You nearly screamed as you turned to face the stranger. What in the hell are you doing here? You recognized the deep and harsh voice just before you lifted the hood from your over your head. Well, explain yourself! You were met face to face with your target, though now you were the one being hunted. You opened your mouth to say something witty, but you were a little lost for words. Does your father know you're out here? What am I saying? I already know the answer to that. Jake, head home, head back home now. I shouldn't have to keep reminding you how dangerous it is at night. Dangerous? This is no place for someone like you to be. 
Someone like me? What do you imply? I'm perfectly capable of handling myself. This is no time for joking around. His voice carried weight and distance. Everyone with an airshot had dropped their conversations and turned to stare at the two of you. He growled and took you by the arm and led you away back into the alley away from prying eyes. He watched him pace the thin passage, mumbling under his breath and turning his head every so often to look at you as he walked, pa as he walked past. His face contorting into annoyance and frustration served as a quick reminder to how much trouble you likely would be in when you're fought with your father later. Despite that, he kept quiet. He hoped he was just managing his composure, but silence was always far more disturbing than being yelled at. But truly had you troubled was the look in his eye. Even with all the rage he seemed to be bottling up, it couldn't, it couldn't drown out the worry you saw within. Leandros, is everything alright? You're giving me the same dreadful look the father did at breakfast. For a second his eyes seemed to go wide, as though he just had an epiphany. He stopped pacing and sighed heavily. It's nothing you need to be concerned about. There's something you're hiding from me again, isn't there? When I say it's nothing, it's nothing. Ugh. Sorry, I shouldn't be yelling. Why were you following me? You were unfocused during training, even while you corrected me on stances, you failed to see that your own were just as poor. Anyone could see that something was on your mind, and you always keep to yourself whenever, you've tr tr whenever you're troubled by something. I just wanted to see if you were okay. And because of that, you decided to leave the castle and sneak around, at night, might I add, just to spy on me? I didn't have much of a choice. Would you have told me how you really felt if I went up and asked you? I didn't think so. There's nothing you have to worry about. I'm your guardian, not the other way around. Alright, y'all, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right there. Uh, let me know if I made a mistake. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. <sighs> super, th super thanks if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.